cusps, ridges, line angles, incisors, laterals, premolars, canines, which ones are going to shred the food, which ones are going to grind the food. So this is all oral facial anatomy. So let's talk about it. I'm going to be sharing my screen with you guys so I can show you the teeth at the same time as I talk about it. So let me share my screen here. Can everybody see this okay? So again, we're going to talk about the teeth and kind of its landmarks, its anatomical landmarks here. So you need to know things like cusps, point angles, line angles, pits, grooves of the teeth. What do all, what do they all mean and how are they formed? So basically a cusp is going to be a pointed rounded projection on the chewing surface of the tooth. We all know what a cusp is. Even look in your teeth now or look in your mouth now and you'll be able to see those cusps. We don't have cusps on the incisors. We don't have cusps on the laterals, but we're looking more at premolars and molars. So basically our posterior teeth and the premolars too, okay? So the anteriors don't have a cusp, but they can have what's called a cingulum. Do you know what that is? We will be talking about that in a little bit as well. So, and here's just kind of another one to kind of show you guys the different cusps that can form. It's also showing you a central groove and a mesial groove. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But notice how cusps basically are those pointed projections that give our teeth that anatomy in order to help us chew our food basically. So, but now let's move on and let's talk about ridges. So what's the difference between a cusp and a ridge? So ridges are a linear elevation on the surface of the tooth. So they are raised areas used to help in food processing and occlusion um, during chewing. So they can be very obvious or they're there, but you can't really tell they're there. They're found on the crown of the tooth, especially molars and premolars. So notice here, this is the mesial cusp of, or sorry, the mesial cusp ridge of a buccal cusp. So when you have a cusp, you have to have a ridge. The cusp is that pointed surface, but it has to come to that point, right? It's not just a point in the middle of the tooth. It has to gradually come to that point, and that's what a ridge is. A ridge helps that cusp get to that point, okay? Um, so here's just a few kind of examples showing you guys, and they're always named according to location. So the mesial cusp ridge is at the mesial side of the tooth. The lingual cusp ridge is going to be the lingual side, the distal, etc. Here's just another kind of image to remind you guys that there's different areas of the tooth. So marginal ridge. So what is a marginal ridge? So we just talked about a ridge in general. What about a marginal ridge? So a marginal ridge is, is a raised rounded border of enamel at the mesial and distal edges of a tooth. Marginal ridges define the boundary of the tooth's occlusal surface and help the interproximal contact between the teeth. The mesial and distal edges of a posterior tooth which are molars and premolars and on the lingual surface of anterior teeth. So what does this basically mean? Okay, so you have the marginal ridge. I'm just kind of looking for a picture to kind of help show you guys. Um, I think I have a picture further down. Um, they're showing you the marginal groove, but not really the marginal ridge here. But re remember, ridges help to form a, form a cusp. So the marginal ridge is going to be at the margins of the teeth, okay? At the mesial and distal edges, because those are where the margins are, the mesial and the distal sides. So they're basically over here, okay? Um, they define the boundary of the tooth's occlusal surface, so the chewing surface, and it, and it helps with the interproximal contact between the teeth. So think of the marginal ridge of just basically being over here, okay? So it's on the mesial and the distal sides. It's not actually showing you on this diagram here, but it's the mesial and the distal sides. So this is why when we're doing a filling for a patient, it's so important to have the proper tooth anatomy. And we have to think about the marginal ridges, line angles, point angles, um, grooves and pits, because all of this is going to help with chewing our foods. So also food doesn't get stuck in between the teeth. If food's getting stuck in between the teeth, that typically means the marginal ridge isn't as round as it should be. Sometimes that happens in our natural tooth anatomy where we don't have have a filling but our teeth are just slightly further apart this is because the marginal ridges 
aren't as round. But what about we have a triangular ridge, we have an oblique ridge, and a transverse ridge. So let's talk about the different ridges. And you probably guessed it. It's dependent on the location of where they are. So the triangular ridge is a ridge descending from the cusp tip towards the center of the tooth. It forms a triangular outline, as the name suggests, and contributes to the occlusal surface, helping grind food. This is in posterior teeth. So it just basically forms a triangle towards the center of the tooth. Um, like this would be forming a triangle here, okay? It's just the way the cusp is formed. Um, I feel like there's another triangular ridge somewhere. I'll point that out when we see it next. Um, but then you have the oblique ridge, which is a ridge running diagonally across the tooth's occlusal surface. It connects the mesial lingual cusp to the distal buccal cusp. So again, the location, the mesial lingual cusp, and then the distal buccal cusp is probably like this. And then this ridge is going to connect the two because the occlusal surface is on the chewing surface. Um, the location, the maxillary molars. And it's showing you here the marginal ridge. That's what I was kind of looking for before. But then there's other ridges to point out too. Ridges always kind of form a cusp. You can't have a cusp without the ridges. And then the ridges, the different types, is just basically telling you the location. So for an example, if there was a ridge here, this would typically be the oblique ridge because it's in that oblique location extending across the occlusal surface. If there was a ridge right here, that would be the triangular ridge because it's in the shape of a triangle towards the center of the tooth as we just learned about here. Now, oh sorry, I almost forgot about the transverse ridge. So this is a ridge formed by the union of two triangular ridges. It runs across the tooth from one side to the other, enhancing the tooth's ability to crush food. So notice how all of these ridges mean something different. So if a patient has this big hole in their tooth, we need to build the tooth up again. That's what a filling does or a crown or something like that. So we need to add in all of this anatomy to the tooth again as it was before to help crush the food, tear the food, grind the food. That's why tooth, anam um, tooth anatomy, oral facial anatomy is so important. Now, remember how I talked about the cingulum. So this is a rounded convex area on the lingual surface of anterior teeth, not the buckles, but on the lingual. It helps to cut the food very important. Anytime you hear the word cingulum, you know it's an anterior tooth, the lingual surface. Typically incisors and canines, always the lingual. And notice how it's towards the cervical third. It's not towards the incisal third, but it's towards the cervical third. Now, what are cuspal inclines? This is just basically the sloping surface on each cusp. A cusp isn't just a point, as I mentioned before, it has to come up from ridges. But all that means is there's a cuspal incline that goes kind of downwards towards the occlusal. You'll notice it um, specifically on posterior teeth because that's where cusps are, are the most prominent. Um, and then grooves. So we talk about height of contour as well. We talk about that in a little bit, but let's just kind of skip those images and go straight to the grooves of the teeth. So I really like showing this image here, this groove in the central, that is a groove. It's just a groove in the tooth. Our teeth aren't a complete smooth surface at the top on the occlusal surface, there's always going to be a groove when we're talking about posterior teeth. So a little bit more about grooves here. It's a long, narrow groove um, on the tooth surfaces, but why do we have them? They help to guide the food through the occlusal surface, but can trap food and bacteria leading to decay. This is where if we're going to place a sealant, it's going to be in that groove. It doesn't change that the groove is there, but it kind of seals it over top. So it's a smooth surface. Now we're not getting stuck with our instrument in that groove. And if a groove is there, it's very easy to get a cavity because it can become sticky and it's very hard to brush. If it's hard to brush, we're not cleaning it properly. That's when it gets sticky from plaque sticky there too long and then forms a cavity. So we don't like that. 
Um, and here's kind of a good example here of just kind of showing you how grooves are formed. Now, remember how we talked about all of those different ridges? Well, now we're adding in the um, ridges and all of the different grooves as well. So you will notice there's a main groove in the middle here, but then notice how there's also some other grooves coming off of that groove that is there. Now, a quick talk about what is a fissure. It's basically another name for a groove. So don't get confused. It's another name specifically for a groove that's very deep. So don't get confused and think they're different things, okay? A fissure just means a very deep groove in other words. Um, this is a great image here showing you all different things, different types of anatomy. We've talked about ridges. We've talked about angles. A little bit so far. Um, we're introducing a fossa here. So lots of fun things to look at, but don't worry, we will talk about all of that. So a developmental groove, again, just basically means it's coming off of a major groove. So if we look at this image here, this is that big groove that if you want to be specific is actually a fissure because it's a very deep groove, but notice how they're also pointing out a triangular groove. They're pointing out central grooves. They're talking about supplemental grooves. These are just grooves coming off of a main groove. I know, why are they making it so complicated? That's just what they do, right? But then we're also introducing again a fossa. So what's the difference between a groove and a fossa? What's the difference between between a ridge, a fossa, and a groove. Make sure to know all of that. Now, a depression, you probably know what this is. It's just basically a concave area of the tooth. So it could be anything. It's kind of a wide category for just something that's a concave area and not pointy because the opposite of concave is basically pointy. So a depression such as pits or grooves, this is what they, they are. So we wouldn't call a groove anything other than a depression because it goes in because it is a, it is a depression so it's just kind of a more expanding category to refer to that as um, we talked about supplemental grooves is just basically a secondary groove coming off of another one but what about a fossa so that's just a concave area similar to a depression it's a concave area more rounded um, this is where grooves or pits can really start they don't start a pit or a, or a groove, well, I guess a pit could. So let's just focus on a groove right now. A groove can't really start on a pointy area. It's going to start in a concave surface. As I briefly mentioned a pit before, pits can start on anything. It's just kind of a pitted area, okay? Um, but a groove can't really start on a pointed area. It has to start from in a depression somewhere. So that's what a fossa is. It just means it's a concave area on the tooth surface, typically the occlusal where you will see a groove, a fissure, same thing or the lingual surfaces typically between cusps make sense because it's not on a pointy area. This is just showing you kind of different fossas. It's just dependent on where they are and their shape. So a lingual fossa is going to be on the lingual. A triangular fossa is just see how these look like mini triangles. And then a central fossa looks, it's in the middle. So it's, it's, it's centered, it's central. How's everybody doing so far? So there's more to go through. There's pits, line angles, point angles, embrasures. I'm going to do a couple more for you. And then if you want more, if you want the whole study guide on oral facial anatomy, I highly recommend signing up for a board exam prep academy course that I do have at dentalel.com where you have study guides. You have teaching videos such as this one that are longer, of course, um, and you will have mock exam practice, case studies, workbooks everything you need to know, all of this information, okay? But let's continue on. We are almost done here. So let's talk about a pit. So that's a very small round depression on a tooth surface. Again, a pit isn't a pointy thing. It's a little depression. They're prone to plaque accumulation because they're hard to clean. If plaque can't get out of there, that means cavities, basically. They're found at the deepest part of a fossa, so the deepest part of a depression. That's what a pit is. So here's a great example. I love this picture. You see a groove in the middle. 
there are grooves coming off of that central groove. Those grooves coming off are referred to as supplemental, but then you have pits. So you have a groove, but then something a little deeper than that is going to be a pit. Now, line angles and point angles. So line angles is the junction between two adjacent, um, adjacent tooth surfaces. They help define the boundaries of the tooth and its overall shape found at the junction of adjacent surfaces, such as mesial lingual or distal buccal. That's a line angle. But a point angle is slightly different. It is the junction of three um, adjacent tooth surfaces. So the line angle is two adjacent tooth surfaces. A point angle is three adjacent tooth surfaces. They define more specific contour. Makes sense because it involves more surfaces. So this is at the intersection of three surfaces. So mesial, lingual, and incisal. Um, embrasures are the V-shaped spaces between adjacent teeth. They allowed food to pass through. This is another one where if the filling isn't done correctly and the embrasures are not a V-shape, but they're more rounded or too much of a pointed V, food can get caught, which isn't good, or food cannot get caught at all and pass all the way through the patient now doesn't, or the patient has this big space there that they didn't have before. That's going to cause problems. This can lead to food impaction. This can lead to cavities. It can lead to the gums being overstimulated. Um, and then they get puffy and cause gum disease. It's not good. So embrasures are between two teeth that are side by side at the contact points on both the mesial and the distal side. If you weren't a part of our oral facial live class this past Sunday, um, you want to be, so definitely be a Dental L member. I went through embrasures in detail. We probably talked about it for 20 minutes. Now my, my students know all about embrasures because I, I showed pictures, di diagrams. We talked about it. Um, the height of contour ties into embrasures as well. You need to know where the height of contour is. So what does that mean? It's basically the highest point of the tooth surface. So see the bulge here. Okay. This is a bulge. This is a bulge. You need to know that highest point on the, on the tooth surface for the tooth curvature to be able to form the embrasure spaces when you're redoing a filling. So I know oral facial anatomy, there's a lot to talk about, right? So this is part of our oral facial anatomy study guide. I talk about so much more here. We go over um, specifically incisors, canines, premolars. There will be a part two to this video. I try to keep the video short and, and um, sweet for like easy to digest education. So there will be a part two where I'm going to talk about the types of the teeth and what the functions are for incisors, canines, premolars. We will talk about that. But all of this you have inside your VIP Board Exam Prep Academy. Easy to digest material, teaching videos all for you to binge watch like hours and hours. There's probably honestly hundreds of videos, especially if you watch the ones from last year too. I teach you guys everything you have to know. So definitely check that out. Do me a favor, click like if you like this video. That does help me to know what videos you all actually like so I can focus on maybe quick study tip videos or if you want to learn more educational videos such as what is a dental crown? Let's talk about that. Let me know what you want to know. I am here. I am always updating. I am always uploading videos on YouTube. Definitely join Dental L on Instagram. More uploads, more updates behind the scenes like sneak peeks of my office, kind of me setting up study plans, all kinds of fun stuff. Okay. So there will be a part two to this video. Stay tuned. Turn on your notifications so you know when part two is coming. It's going to be later this week. Okay. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.